my name's Tanya. I am a speech pathologist currently in Sydney, but soon to be moving to Wagga Wagga, actually. Um, I graduated from the University of Technology, Sydney in 2021. And since then, I've been working in predominantly um, the acute hospital setting with a variety of clinical caseloads. I think the decision to become a speech pathologist was quite a journey for me. I remember finishing high school. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I knew that I loved science. So I ended up studying a Bachelor of Science, majoring in neuroscience and physiology. And in my final year was faced with that question, you know, what next? I knew I wanted to go into something allied health, but I wasn't quite sure what just yet. Um, but I remember listening to a podcast interviewing a person who had had a stroke and they were talking about the goals that they had in their speech therapy um, and how much of a difference it had made to their quality of life. And that really inspired me. I think part of it stems from my cultural background as an Iraqi, um, where coming together for meals, communicating, telling stories, sharing um, opinions, really creates a sense of community and it's how I feel connected to my community. So because it, I think it's so valuable to me, I love the idea of being able to support others in the same way. I'd say the highlights of my early career so far, acknowledging it's only been, this is my second year of practicing now, uh, one would be last year when I attended and presented at the Speech Pathology Australia conference when it was in Melbourne. Um, there, it's something that I hold very close to my heart. It was such an amazing experience being able to present to fellow colleagues, including my supervisors. Some of my lecturers were there as well. Um, and it was a great opportunity to also see some other presentations, learn from these names that I had, you know, read their papers during my studies and it just made me feel like a greater part of that speech path community. Um, also, I'd say working with my peers as part of the early career reference group has been really um, engaging and an exciting part of my career so far. Um, last year, I was part of a group that created a resource about supervision. And I think seeing that infographic in the Speak Out magazine was just such an exciting experience. I know that I learned a lot from developing that resource with my team members. So thinking about how others could use it and benefit from it was really exciting. Um, clinically, many things, I guess, generally any time that patients, clients, family members have told me that they've felt very heard or understood during their time with me um, means a lot and I very much cherish that as well as um, the first time and I remember it so clearly the first time that I worked closely with someone who then had a video fluoroscopy so seeing them go from that initial bedside swallowing assessment to then having that objective evaluation through a video VF was really interesting and educational and then being able to work closely with them and other key stakeholders to discuss ongoing management and support their goals. Um, was it, it's been a really rewarding process. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think it's been so important that we kind of advocate for our profession a bit more and make sure that, you know, communities understand how we can help because the number of times you know you hear about um, people who really could benefit from services that just don't know about it um, so then you know for me because I'm in the hospitals sometimes you know they come in and you're talking to a family and you can see so clearly that they could have been benefiting from supports and therapy for a some time but just didn't know that they could access it um, and it's great to then be able to provide them with that education but if we can provide more education beforehand maybe we can support people earlier. Being a speech pathologist early in your career 
I would say is a roller coaster of learning and collaboration. I've predominantly worked in the acute hospital setting and every day is a day for something new, you know, new patients, new diagnoses, new concerns, new people to collaborate with, new stories to learn from people to help. Um, you learn so much and the learning really doesn't stop. <laughs> But I've been very lucky to have had mentors um, who have encouraged me to reflect on all that I've learned and um, not be too hard on myself because it really is a journey when you enter the profession. But honestly, I, it's the best. Um, even when days are stressful or overwhelming, you enter your patient or client's world and that's all that matters. And for a lot of us, that's why we've entered this profession. You know, we're very eager to help and support. Um, so it's just so rewarding being able to do that after years and years of studies. Um, I'd say it's also a very collaborative time. You know, you're collaborating with patients and their families to make sure that the services place them at the center. You're collaborating with your team members, your supervisors, senior colleagues, learning from them and making sure that you're implementing everything you can to provide best practice um, and collaborating with in the hospital so many other profession, doctors, dietitians, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, social workers, interpreters, um, just really making sure that you're providing this holistic model of care. So it's definitely a big time for learning and growth, but a very exciting and rewarding time. Being a member of Speech Pathology Australia, I guess, means that I feel quite connected to my profession. I have access to resources and information to support my professional growth and development. Whenever I face something new or want to learn more about a topic, the resources offered through the Learning Hub have really supported my growth and understanding, which I've then been able to translate into improved patient care. And I've done so many at this point, you know, around cultural competencies, around um, swallowing and respiratory conditions. I've attended um, panels and discussion groups. And it's just been so resourceful in me feeling quite connected to a community and the feeling a part of this profession as I enter it. Um, being a member of Speech Pathology Australia and especially as a member of the Early Career Reference Group also means that I've had the opportunity to advocate for early career speeches and what we face as we enter the profession. So last year I was part of a team supporting a greater understanding of supervision and mentoring um, we were able to develop resources that can now be found on the website. Um, and it was, it's been a very important and it's an essential part of career progression. It's lovely to feel a part of that. Um, and this year I'm part of a team that we're focusing on well-being. So we're doing this deep dive into courageous conversations, um, an area that many of us have to develop skills in as we begin working and interacting with clients, families, colleagues and organizations um, and being a member of SPA also means that I am constantly reminded to uphold basically our core values of what we endeavor for I'm encouraged to make sure that I'm maintaining you know my um, connection to awareness for what we do as a profession advocating for our profession um, maintaining the professional standards and I think especially as someone entering the profession, really getting so engaged in your day-to-day -day tasks, wanting to learn and grow. Being a member of SPA also means I'm encouraged to think about my role as greater than just my day-to-day -day clinical tasks and more as a part of something bigger. I think in the future, there's just so many different directions I, things could go in. Um, I'm about to start a role at Wagga Wagga Base Hospital, which is in rural New South Wales, where I'm really excited to continue growing my skills with 
the management of adult communication and swallowing concerns and supporting quality of life within that community. I'm looking forward to more opportunities to be part of the team and continue learning from my colleagues, participating in professional development, being part of SPA as well to make sure that I'm connecting with all of the resources that we have to offer and advocating for our profession. I'm eager to be involved in research and quality improvement within the workplace and hoping to maybe one day do my PhD, just haven't decided in what area yet. I'm also interested in continuing my connection with students and universities, looking forward to supervising students on placements and giving back the way that others have supported me when I was a student and upon entering the profession. I really think the opportunities are quite endless um, and I'll just see where all of my experiences take me.